Hello everybody, Heather here from Collective Rising. Um, today is, um, well, it's a special day in terms of uh, cosmic, uh, cosmic energies. We definitely are in for a, a big change, a planetary change in terms of um, the energies that are streaming onto our beautiful planet at the moment and um, the lead up to these cosmic events as you all know um, if you've been following the the um, teachings of Ashayana Dian um, or the MCO teachings if you have been following you would know that we are in a very pivotal time right now with the stellar activation cycle uh occurring between or has occurred between 2000 and 2007 and so we're right now just um after the stellar activation cycle opening dates which 2000 2007 but there is an aftermath of that as well because you'll see that there is always two things happening we have a whole new shift in terms of consciousness so a lot of uh, new babies are being born have a whole new energy codex coming into birth taking birth taking incarnation here for the purpose of rebuilding what has been um, previously destroyed by these negative factions that once were uh, took reign of, of, of our planet and not just our planet, that extends uh, much deeper than just our planet alone, um, but the whole the whole galaxy, the whole cosmos. And as you know, we are extensions of the macrocosmos. The micro and macrocosmos are always interchangeably working together. And um, what affects one affects the other because we're part of the whole. And so what affects the outer dimensions um, also affects the inner dimension. So the shifts not only happen here on planet Earth, but they extend out into the far galaxy and into the, the Milky Way and into the, um, the planetary and galactic, uh, galactic spirals as well. So we can all feel there's a major shift and so for help, uh, to help in the acceleration of, of rebuilding and um, reinventing this, uh, this new energy so that Earth can ascend back into, into Tara and what was previously Earth um, is called Tara before it goes into Gaia and Aramatena. So they're all Earth, but on different vibrations. Um, they exist in higher dimensions. Earth, unfortunately, is the, uh, the planet that exists on the lowest dimensions in Harmonic One. So in order for us to ascend, um, we need to catch on these energies. So we have a whole new, um, a whole new generation, if you like, um, of beings that are being um, in, that are taking birth here right now in order to accelerate this process of ascension, whether that be the Earth's ascension or the collective, the human race and um, other beings who want to join join um, the Christic uh, path and who want to also have come come from the you know the negative side, if you like, who haven't been so good in the past and have had a change of mind and heart and have decided that they would like to go back to origin and uh, to source and find their way back home. And so the MCEO perspective on this is we do not, um, we do not reject anyone who seriously and genuinely wants to make a, a comeback. And unfortunately with that what happens is um, we allow them in and some of them actually do um, well there's a whole history of these beings um, when they come into onto the Christic path they're entrusted to help accelerate the ascension of their particular race and what happens is they come in and they then they defect and then they start to cause events that are unnatural and um, they go against uh, God and Source, and uh, then they, you know, they brainwash the masses. They create destruction, 
and they take a whole heap of people with them down the phantom path so that's been happening for a very very long time the last time we had a stellar activation cycle was 210,000 BC and that didn't end up well because it ended up in a uh, cataclysm due to the um, pole shift that had occurred. So for, um, for that purpose there has been a huge incarnation of indigo children and also Christic people who have um, come back in order to to make uh, to prevent the pole shift from happening um, in this most recent uh, stellar activation cycle so now we're witnessing the the bifurcation of the two paths the path of the negative reversals and the path of the positive acceleration of, of the timeline that uh, for people who have chosen the positive path, which is the Christic path and the path back to, to God. So due to that, we have received um, what is called, as many of you would know, the MCEO, so Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order teachings, and the speaker for those teachings and the one who translated those teachings is called Ash or Ashayana Dien. And um, she is considered speaker one, and there's two other speakers who have also joined the mission. And I want to say here that there's many speakers and many people who represent the um, MCEO, MCEO and uh, the Christic path, but they not necessarily assigned as speakers. So we all do different uh, work and we all form parts of the puzzle that come together and, and create something huge. But for the actual MCEO um, teachings and the interpretation of what is called the CDT plates, which I will explain later on, uh, there's three, there were three um, main speakers who are assigned for the task. And so the MCEO teachings were assigned to come to earth at a much later date say 200 years from today um, as a minimum and what had happened is they had to be accelerated because the negatives were doing so much da damage that if they had continued without any counterfeit measures the earth would have gone into a pole shift and that had to be prevented for many reasons but one of these reasons is that earth takes um, on the map on the galactic map it has a very strategic point uh, location and that cannot happen on earth because if it were to happen on earth the whole galaxy would be affected and everybody would potentially be sucked into the phantom matrix and we'd all be um we'd, we'd all go back to being dust particles and so we had to um like they say they had to save the day so there was something called the rescue mission that was created for the um for the genetic uh, bioregenesis to take place and that essentially meant that uh, someone that represents the melchizedek cloister emerald order had to come down um and um step down their consciousness in order to bring those teachings to to us all and um, so, like I said before, there, there is a path of ascension, but there's a, another um, path and it's a, it's a negative path, but it's the path of devolution. So it's a path of um, losing touch or losing or being cut off from source creator and therefore losing that um, God seed atom that eternal god seed atom and losing that connection with what is eternal and that meant that these factions of consciousness had to create a way to stay alive and so that uh, pushed them into um, trying to be you know 
innovative and, and create ways in order to stay alive. So they created what is called their metatronic technology. And um, they created um, many technology based on the science of um, light refraction and creating a false light. So when you hear a false light and when you feel um, false light around you, that comes most likely coming from these factions that have created metatronic technologies in order to siphon light, but not true light. So therefore it is um, not eternal. It'll last a certain time for a, for a good amount of time before it runs out completely. And that quantum holding of these consciousness particles will eventually die off and um, and it just dies. Whereas those that are connected to eternal life force, God creator will always have a never ending supply of energy and the soul remains in an eternal space where we can always rejuvenate ourselves and um, and um, and choose choose to always ascend and expand into the whole into god creator uh space so that we can we can remain um eternal because eventually that is what we here to do and learn is to firstly realize that we are eternal beings and secondly experience the the meaning of eternity and to experience the meaning of eternity is to know and to remember the, the self having all these experiences and perceptions all combined and, um, and know that the journey that it's been through is essentially taking the soul back to the place it came from. And it's a never ending flow of to and from. So it's a, we are born out of God's seed, eternal consciousness and we expand into the cosmos, if you like. And then we go, like they say, we backflow back into source. There's, there's this constant on and off, flashing on and off of our particles in what is considered a holographic matrix because we really don't sit here in flesh in real matter. It is matter as far as um, the third dimension is concerned. However, when we elevate consciousness, we will find that the third dimension is, um, is a very solid plane of reality where things appear to be very solid, but on a higher dimension, they really, everything is moving, everything is flashing, everything is uh, basically sc scalar wave um, scalar wave patterns that are coming in, in and out of existence all the time at a rapid speed, which makes it impossible for our eyes to really fathom and understand the whole picture of how it works. This is why we should be seeking to ascend and activate our DNA in order to get a real grip and a grasp on what is actually taking place and the nature of the reality that we live in so we're not stuck in the in the ephemeral we're not stuck into a place of you know stuckness where a lot of people do actually feel very stuck that's because they don't have an expanded understanding when it comes to the nature of of this reality and if we do understand the nature of this reality we can take life a little less seriously and start to play, um, play with the energies. So there's no reason why we can't understand the nature of ourselves as a flashing in and out of this existence. And maybe, you know, when we flash in, we do it a lot more quicker and we flash out, we do it slower. And that way we can understand what happens in those dimensions of flashing out. So we're going back into creator source and along the way, we're, we're witnessing and observing all these other dimensions that we come from um, and enjoying that view because I'm, I personally have been through that, uh, have witnessed some of, some of these, um, I don't want to say extraordinary because they actually become quite normal when 
we start to activate like the fourth DNA strand, you start to see the third dimension and how the third dimension operates. And it clears a lot of those illusions as well from the mind. And when we reach fifth dimension, also the fourth and the third become very apparent and very obvious as to um, their nature and how things operate and so on and so forth. And like for me personally, I'll just give you an example activating the fourth DNA strand meant that I can look at a tree and not only see branches and and um, you know thickness and and solid solidity I can also see the aura around the tree the energy that it's emitting and um, sometimes I can tell between a tree that is actually happy versus a tree that it's uh, that is sad because of how much energy it's emitting and the size um, the diameter of the aura around it so um, sometimes I look at the space and I see flashing lights that's another thing um, and when you start to activate into your higher um, DNA strands um, you really become less interested in in the um, mundane ephemeral um, shallow if you like um, uh, sort of events that and and interactions with people that take it too seriously like it's it's a matter of life and death and it's the end of them if something was to happen or like you know they get triggered by by so many things and um, just just makes the experiences really really dull and really um, disempowering but um, when you get that higher view and higher vision, you lose interest in that because you're no longer interested in investing your energy in these sort of events and transactions and, you know, um, different people, different energies. So, yeah, I think um, I just wanted to just say that as an overview of, um, since it's a very interesting time we're in right now, one day before the the solar eclipse, the seventh of April. So one day, eighth of April. Yes, yeah, so that's tomorrow. And so, and personally, and honestly, what I'm feeling about the solar eclipse is, um, I'm just really not going to give it any power. I'm not definitely not going to participate in allowing the projections to to be loosing out of me because we all know the negatives take this opportunity to, to loose on fear and disempowerment and ignorance of the people so even though we can be in the dark about what this real event is meant to be about um, let's just take a step back and observe with an unbiased perspective let's have a look at what is actually occurring without even determining the outcome without any outcome let's just observe and let's feel into it so how it makes you feel like right now i'm sitting outside as you can see the clouds these are natural clouds by the way no chemtrails i can tell um perfectly normal clouds we're expecting a little bit of rain and this is an area i'm living in right now where it's highly 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 um, attractive if you like <laughs> for activities that go against the natural phenomenon okay because they like to trial chemtrails and they like to trial spraying crops and they like to trial you know all their I don't know new age propaganda and you know this is an area very um, strategic because it's um, on the ley lines and it's flat on the ley line so it's um, it's it's the ley line is that passes through Australia is passes through my area and it's only just kilometers away so yeah it's powerful and it's a strategic it's they call it the fruit bowl of Australia because they grow all the crops 
and uh, or many crops, not all, but a lot of vegetables also come from here. And it's on the uh, nestled right on the border of three different states. They were going to actually make um, the capital of Australia here, <laughs> and then they decided to they decided Canberra was a better fit for some reason. Anyhow. I'm going on a tangent here so I will come back to now explaining the history historical origins of the MCO teachings so I want to say first that um, MCO teachings are actually connected to the CDT plates and uh, the CDT plates are holographic discs that have stored a lot of information so in, in a quantum form so energetic um, if you like, it's an energetic library of records and it has a lot of encryptions and codes and information on it that once it's deciphered, it'll give you the history of, from day dot, the history of the, um, the history of Earth and, and before that, way before that. So we're talking millions of years, if not billions of years of information on these holographic disks. Now there's 12 CDT plates. And um, anyway, I will go through the history later on as to where some of these discs are, um, if there's enough time, because I'm trying to keep this video somewhat short, less than 40 minutes. So what I want to say is um, that the MCO teaching, teachings did not originate on Earth so they were not underground and came out of the underground and they weren't hidden in some pyramid or with a group of people that did not originate on earth they did not come from here um, they represent a record of advanced spiritual science spiritual science not just spiritual and not just scientific it's spiritual science so it's true science and not the pseudoscience that you get nowadays in, in our modern um, in the modern day academia and uh, education. Um, so there's an extensive history that's held in these CDT plates and uh, they're translated into many forms in many periods and locations within and beyond a 15 dimensional matrix. So we are part of the 15 dimensional matrix, which means we, there are dimensions from one to 15. And the higher we go on the dimensional scale, the lighter we become, the more energy frequency we hold and the lighter we become. And so the record of knowledge and history that the MCO teachings stand for represents a gift of insight. So it's an insight, it's a, it's a, it's to remove the veil of ignorance and um, it was provided over 950 billion years ago billion years so I said millions before but yeah it is billions of years ago by whom it's um, it's come here through the elder races who were considered the guardians and still are considered the guardians of the universe and beyond and they these uh, these factions of consciousness have actually ascended to a point where they've um, they've completely evolved into full ascended masters and avatars and rishis that they've become the uh, the full um, embodiment of the highest dimension that that there is in this particular time matrix. Um, so the MCO teachings were brought to earth uh, in several different periods of pre-ancient history, beginning with their first dispensation. The first dispensations of these teachings was in 25 million years ago, which were subsequently destroyed. So they were destroyed. Um, and I'll just give you an example of how they would be destroyed. So sometimes the... the um, those that are entrusted to bring the teachings here, unfortunately, they uh, rebel in order to claim some of that information as theirs and twist that knowledge in order to serve their own personal agenda, which 
is mainly about personal gain, personal power. Um, you know, it's like, you know, a child who's defiant and does not want to ask permission from the mother and father, the parents. So they go on doing their own thing and they end up doing all the wrong things because they don't have that higher guidance. So these factions of consciousness have decided to distort the information that they've been entrusted to share with the human species and others who were a part of the civilizations on earth in order to help with the ascension process but they end up distorting that information and twisting it for for their own personal gain in the most recent uh, or the more recent pre-ancient history the mco teachings were again brought to earth by a collective of interdimensional beings and races referred to as the Guardian Alliance Melchizedek Oyster Emerald Order. It's, it's a, a long word, G-A-M-C-E-O. That's not to be confused with the Galactic Federation, who is, um, Galactic Federation is a body of interdimensional beings who are commissioned to do the wrong thing. They spread misinformation and they reach out to people in the New Age community in order to distort the Emerald Guardian teachings and they end up creating reversals and they take people off the path of the true Melchizedek path or the Christic teachings in order to, to gain power. And so we have to be very careful not to fall in the traps and snares of the Galactic Federation and those who claim they channel Galactic Federation or their representatives and those commissioned to, to serve their, their agenda. Um, the MCEO teachings were returned to Earth as a gift to an evolving humanity. And detailed profiles of the GAMCEO collective are found in the Voyager's book by Ashayana Dian, which was published in 1999 to 2001. So between these uh, 1999 and 2001, that's when uh, these books were published. And there are two Voyager's book, one and two. And since the first CDT of Plate Maharata text, translations were made in 246 thousand BC, so two forty six thousand BC, many events of both climatic change and human warring have occurred on Earth due to the recurrence of such events. Uh, so the textbooks and ten of the twelve CDT plates were actually returned and retrieved by the Azurites and secured under MCEO garden, uh, guardianship. One of the two missing CDT plates was retrieved and returned to MCEO protection in the 1600s AD, so that's really recent. And the other was retrieved in November in 1999 AD. And that's when Ashayana, the speaker, first speaker, in the MCEO, has began to translate those texts. So it was that missing CDT plate that was needed for humanity to finally, um, you know, finally ascend and evolve into our highest 12 DNA, double helix DNA potential. And so in pre-ancient times, after securing the Maharata text, 10 of the 12 plates, the GA, MCEO and Crystal River Adashi adepts created a set of protocols um, by which the MCEO and CDT plate Maharata text teachings would be returned to earth through remote translation during certain periods of significance while the retrieved CDT plate Maharata text remain in security storage until a future date when it would be safe to do so. Because if human consciousness was not ready to receive pivotal information of this power, um, what ends up happening is people misuse that information and create their own system using this 
like if you you know think of this like advanced technology or think of this as you know you have a secret to to make um and and create a an atomic bomb for example and if you know how to create it and um, you have a mind that likes destruction not creation but destruction think about what this individual can do with the atomic bomb technology and the no the no the steps to make to make something like that it's so destructive so this information could not just be entrusted to humanity we had to it had to be a specific time where the human consciousness was predicted to reach a certain point of understanding and ability to integrate this very very high level information so it's not to just allow anybody to get it just at any any point in time when they're not ready for it um, it's also for their own protection because if we working on activating DNA we really don't want to do this uh, at a super fast rate we really need to slow down the process because too much activation at once can lead to um, can lead to a high level of um, resistance if you like resistance from from the internal from the energy body and that resistance resistance creates blocks and creates problems when it comes to integrating the energy so energy coming that is a high level streaming energy with the body resisting can create a lot of physical problems so we need to integrate slowly it's like when you come from an area where it's freezing cold all year and hardly see the sun and the maximum temperature that you get in these areas is like 20 degrees okay and then all of a sudden you spent you know you've spent say 10 years in that place and then all of a sudden you're taken out and you're brought to a desert area where the heat reaches 45 degrees and you had no time for your body to adjust or to you know to um even your eyes to adjust to the new light to the to the profoundness of that energy from the sun so what ends up happening is your body will shut down because it cannot simply absorb and integrate those those light photons so this is the same thing when we're activating we want to take it easy and slowly and listen and learn to listen to what our body is telling us so if the body is telling us that it's it's too much it's just shutting down it's getting tired the brain work the the you know you just feel tired you feel like you just cannot take it anymore then you need to slow down just go out in nature and ground and you know drink good water and and fast for a while and then just reset the body and um you know i mean i do that i'm i've noticed these last two years i've been activating really really fast and the other day I got to a point where I could not listen to anything, literally not one thing that has to do with the MCO teachings. I would shut down instantly. And that's a sign that I'm, I've integrated too much and uh, more than what my body can handle. And so I had to take a step back. So I literally went onto Netflix, which I don't actually watch. Um, we just happened to have an old subscription from one of our teenage children who enjoys a few comedy shows um, and I took a step back and I just decided that I am just going to go on Netflix for two days and watch comedy um, and I ended up watching um... yes yeah, so I um, was watching Inside Job and is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. It's a series, and a two-part series, and it's like, I don't know, maybe eight, ten um, episodes. But yeah, it's all about the conspiracy theories and Flat Earth and all that, and reptilians and the shadow government. And I don't know, I don't know if that's a way to... It's, it's informing us, or if it's purposely confusing us I'm not quite sure but anyway I enjoy that and um, and for now 
And now I feel like, okay, I'm ready to go back and, and start my um, techniques and, you know, the activations once again. But yeah, sometimes we do need to pop out and back in in order to reset. So don't feel like you have to constantly stay on that um, bandwagon, you know, you're allowed to pop back out and join the 3D world and even, you know, go out and do things with people that you don't normally do. Just, you know, I like to see life sometimes as an adventure, as much as a place to educate oneself and to grow and, um, and you know, not just take life too seriously. Like it's always a matter of uh, fighting and, and flying and, and just in constant survival mode, but a place where you can just come and be silly, you know, learn, grow, um, make some friends and yeah, that sort of thing. So anyhow, back to the, the, the stuff I was talking about before. The protocols by which the guardians have historically orchestrated remote translation of the CDT plates, Maharata texts, during various periods of human history, involves their appointment in a particular period of a group of three MCO speakers from amongst the earth populations. Like I said, Ashiyana Diana was speaker one. And um, each group of three MCO teachers will work closely, not teachers, sorry, speakers, works closely together with the GA MCO guardians to bring remote translations of the CDT plates, Maharata text, into their respective period. Now since 208,000 BC approximately, numerous partial translations of the CDT plates, Maharata texts, have been orchestrated. So they've taken place before, this is not the first time, including the mo the the most or well, the more recent efforts of 22,340 BC and then 2,040 BC and 10 BC in more recent periods of ancient history. MCEO three speaker groups and partial CDT plate translations have appeared in Hindu, Hebrew, Chinese, Tibetan, African, Egyptian, Mayan, Incan, Celtic, Druidic, and some other cultures. So we have been given this information before through texts, through Maharata texts, which we now call religion. Religion was meant to be based on, all religions were meant to be based on the Maharata texts, but you wonder what happened there. Mm. Who twisted it. The method by which MCO speakers achieve remote translation of the CDT plates begins early in life, so they're commissioned to do this work. And what happens is they sign a contract or, or a sole contract to come here and, and do that work. So they have a specific mission. They're not here to evolve, they're not here to make friends, <laughs> they're here to um, fulfill their, their soul mission um, and contract. And so uh, so during every period in which the CDT plate Maharata text translations are rendered, the GA MCO is aware of the identities of the potential speakers before they enter physical incarnations on earth and watches over them from the point of physical conception. These MCEO three speaker appointments are assigned prior to conception with each of the three speaker appointments having an additional two primary backup appointments and occasionally a few others um, to serve as secondary backup. So they come here with being commissioned for this role, but also they have backups in case something goes wrong. Or in case that sometimes a speaker would um, opt out and they want to revoke their contract, so then they have someone else in their place to do the job. In every period, a pool of several individuals incarnate with specific dormant configurations carried in their DNA. And so when activated, 
These configurations open specific electromagnetic passages within the neurological circuitry, allowing these who carry them to receive protected, electronically encoded data streams directly from GA MCO, which means this is not channeling. Channeling is when you allow your electromagnetic field and your biofield to be open so that another entity would step in and take over. And that's what channeling is. And this is not endorsed in MCO teachings. Channeling is a big no-no. Instead, the method that works for translating the Maharata text comes from specific encoded data that comes through the person's DNA and um, it comes from their self, from their own self on a higher dimension. So um, once their dormant uh, DNA activates, then this person will have access to that uh, library of records, if you like. And, um, and not only that, but they're able to biologically receive and neurologically translate information because for us who are still activating, um, when we hear something that sounds very complex, our DNA just cannot um, really analyze it to the minute details. Like we might understand the gist of it or the whole picture, but to break it down into minute details, that's the hard part is to really be able to understand it fully and read the encryptions and let alone teach other people about it. So with these MCO, um, appointees they actually have that potential within them and they they receive these encodings but they're also able to neurologically translate these encodings and um, and not have an you know not go through that inner conflict of um, self-doubt and things like that so they translate and they translate it with with full conviction Now, this process of clear communication is called uh, Kilontic communication. There's a whole science called Kilontic science, and we can explore the, the we can explore the meaning of Kilontic science in in another video. Or if you'd like to have a look, you can um, reach out to me, and I'll send you some information. Uh, pertaining to the Kilontic science. It's a really fascinating science on its, on, of its own right and uh, can be quite difficult to understand but really makes so much sense and it's almost like it's impossible to refute the information because it's a whole level of science that we're missing out on. I mean it's, it's really 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 amazing. So if you do want that information, I'm happy to give you some leads, some links and uh, share some information with you if you just post below in the comments and, and ask. It will be a good idea also if you include your email address and I can always send you send you that information to your email. So Kilonti communication is not the same process commonly referred to as channeling in the New Age movement or even conscious mediumship. A channeling is a process in which the spirit of the disembodied individual or collective, temporary or sometimes permanently, people can be completely taken over on a permanent basis because they engage in channeling activities. Um, so that disembodied spirit enters the body, the physical by, body, by, um, by, through the bioenergetic field uh, and consciousness of the incarnate human in order to communicate in the human world. Like I said, the adepts and the Adashi adepts of the MCEO uh, Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order do not endorse this activity and they themselves do not engage in it. And the reason they don't is because it causes biological damage to the DNA as well because you're constantly inviting in um, other entities that are not you that don't share the same Christic pattern or Cathara template, Cathara pattern 
and encryptions and codes and so we're all unique in our own patterns and we all have our personal encryptions and energetic patterns that if another entity comes in it actually overrides your own pattern so you lose yourself in the process as well and it doesn't matter if you've only done it once or twice there's a there is damage that's occurred in in that um in the body um albeit small but yeah i'll definitely start fixing um and repairing dna damage if you've channeled in the past which a lot of people have unknowingly thinking that it's a good thing um so yeah it's a very risky thing and in many cases both channeling and trans mediumship unconscious channeling can also lead to temporary or permanent identity displacement and possession as chelonti communication electronic data streaming does not cause human dna damage so this particular method with the emerald guardians um, and and uh, transmitting that information to the appointees and speakers that have come to commission to come to earth this process is of no harm and no risk whatsoever it's not a process that invades the human body and wants to take over um, it's a method of choice for the guardian collectives all humans have organic genetic ability to engage in some degree through um, in kilontic communication so it's a perfectly safe method to receive information now the cdt plate and the maharata text translations which date back uh, we're talking about the translations not the actual cdt plates so the translations of 246,000 bc contained original multi-dimensional spiritual science ascension teachings which have been falsified and twisted through the new age agenda so we have to be very discerning about true ascension mechanics versus new age ascension mechanics um, so the true ascension mechanics through the maharata text comes from the original 12 ancient earth religions and all subsequent fragment religions eventually devolved. Thus, the CDT plates and Maharata texts represent the common source from which all known earthly, historical and modern religious doctrines and early scientific inspiration emerge. Original 12 ancient earth religions did not begin as competitive, contra contradictory doctrines but rather represented complementary perspectives. So the information given in this particular religion should complement the other religion and so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a, it's a way of bringing people together under the same, um, it's not a belief system, it's, it's the truth of, of the nature of reality as it were contained within these doctrines uh, I shouldn't call them doctrines but texts sacred texts and so they've been twisted and and um, amended so many times that it's really hard to even trace them back to their original uh, source um, they were first taught in oral translation so first they were orally translated not written, not in a written form. Um, after the CDT plate, remote translation protocols had been established by the MCEO guardians upon their reclamation of the 10 of the 12 CDT plates in 208,216 BC. The oral translations emerged from division of the CDT plate Maharata text teachings into 12. So they divided the teachings into 12 corresponding corresponding yes aspects called legions okay so they were called legions and each legion represented oral translation of one of the 12 cdt plate silver discs the collective body of the 12 cdt plate oral legions was known as the 12 legion of the crystalla or crystalla 
and was derived from the seven sacred sounds, representing the first audible core creation sound tones in our 15 dimensional universe. The seven sacred core creation sound tones, which are Ka, Ra, Ya, Sa, Ta, Ha, La. You combine that word together, it becomes crystal or um, crystalla, and was used in reference to the collective body of the 12 CDT plate oral legions. So in the MCO teachings, one of the primary teachings is that um, humans come from a, the lineage of angelic humanity. We come from angelic tribes. Each of the 12 CDT plate oral legions was entrusted to one of the 12 original earth angelic human race lines, which are collectively referred to as the 12 tribes of humanity. And so if you want more information on that, um, on the angelic tribes, it can be found in Voyager's 2 book in second edition. Each tribe protected and perpetuated in oral tradition, the knowledge and historical record contained within its respective CDT plate oral legion. Each single CDT plate oral, oral legion was remote translated by an MCEO three speaker group that, has, that was a member of the particular tribe to which the CDT plate corresponded. Only one three speaker group was active on earth at any given time. So now we have the three speaker group that come here between 1998, or well, they were born before, but when they started teaching was between 1998 and um, not sure when, when that ceased to teach, but let's say 2012, okay? And so the CDT plate oral legion remote translations were returned to earth over time in sequential order, starting with the teaching contained in the CDT plate number one. Each oral legion was brought into angelic human culture in different periods to sequentially assist in the progressive evolution of the human collective. Now, the historical translations of the teaching contained in the two missing discs were rendered from the Maharata text through GAMCO Kilonti communication in various historical periods. Um, yes, yeah, so the contradictory doctrines now in, in terms of contemporary world religions uh, there's many observed um, and subtle control dogma distortions contained within the text through which human populations were made um, d d divided and were pitted against each other. So from that emerged progressive intentional distortion, mistranslation and concealment, concealment, so it's hidden hidden secrets and these uh, original CDT plates translations were meant to be for everyone but were kept secret um, and then the new age channeling movement began and that further distorted uh, the truth in so many ways and not only that but also put falsified data in part of the new age teachings and called it the ancient sacred teachings and um, these falsifications were originally intended by Illuminati groups to sustain the mass control dogmas by which they covertly govern and direct contemporary human global society. But within the present distortion of doctrine, each primary religion of today still contains a seed of spiritual truth. So if you know where to look, you will find a seed or spiritual truth even within the distortions because they're all like I said based on the original 12 ancient earth religions the earlier 12 CDT plate or legions of the Kristala and the original common source CDT plate Maharata text MCEO teachings from which they originally emerged
What's important to mention as well is the connection between science, spirituality and evolution and the Templar. Templar is the science of the chakras or the energy vortices of the, the earth body. So the original MCO CDT plate teachings clearly explain the inherent unity of science and spirituality. So we're not pseudo-spiritualists who are trying to um, dis uh, science and uh, you know we're not trying to create a division between science and spirituality it's the opposite we are aiming for a complete unification of what is science and what is spirituality because spirituality is based on science but science is not based on spirituality and it should be because they're two they're one and the same and so there's a very intimate relationship between consciousness, spirit, and atomical structure. The soul in itself can be understood in scientific terms. And it will, will appeal to the intellectual just as much it, it will appeal to the spiritualist. It will appeal to all levels of people because it makes sense on a very deep level to understand how this creation has actually has its come has how it was created and it's created on on science scientific principles and mathematical equations and mathematical patterns and codes so it's all scientific you know and so the cdt plates teaches ascension it teaches true ascension which happens true ascension because there is untrue ascension as well which is ascension but it's takes you only to a, a limited uh, spot uh, from which you will reverse and go back down again. But true ascension takes you all the way there into your Christos or Christic identity. And so true ascension happens via the organic process of atomic transfiguration through which a being is enabled to biologically engage natural multidimensional spiritual evolution back into wholeness. So back into your spiritual, full spiritual avatar identity. Why do we need to do that? It's, it's, it's very clear that we all have a very deep desire embedded within our own psyche, in our own soul and heart to go back to the origin, to get a feel of what it's like to be free and to be to, uh, to, to return to our eternal life expression in its fullest, okay? And that's a very liberating feeling to have. You can get glimpses of that sometimes when you, you know, when you're sitting in your body, but you do like those transcendence meditations, you feel absolutely free and in complete wholeness and oneness with the totality, with the supreme eternal consciousness and that feeling is so liberating just knowing that that plane of existence that plane of reality exists that we're all a part of is something that's truly truly liberating so we don't need to be stuck we don't need to feel stuck if we just know these key things um, and so through the process of atomic transfiguration so it's a it's a changing the atomical structure of the body it involves very specific structures and processes inherent to the law of multidimensional physics. So again, we include in science physics as well and chemistry. That's what it is. Science is chemistry and physics and it's based on the laws of uh, physics and chemistry and not separate from it. And so um, it applies to the human biospiritual anatomy. A human being can experience ascension passage. So we can find that passage and go through that passage of ascension into ever great states of multidimensional biospiritual evolution. The ascension passage is the organic biospiritual process of dimensional translocation, visitation and transmigration, relocation through the multi-dimensional structure of space-time. 
which culminates in the evolution back into the original eternal state of pure consciousness from which all initially emerged. Keyword here is all. We all emerged from the eternal. Even the bad ones, even the evil ones have emerged from the eternal. Um, and what it did afterward, afterwards was it's by its own will, by its own choice. And this is a free will planet. Uh, you, each person is free to make their own decisions. And um, not without consequences though. Um, nevertheless, it is a free will planet. And so being a free will planet, you can see there is a polarity, a very um a a very clear cut between the negative and positive and each of those decisions that are made the choices that are made um become the fate or the destiny of that group collective or the individual so it's not without consequences no one goes no one goes, um, there's always cause and effect, that's the cosmic rule and universal law. Every cause has an effect. And so what you choose becomes, determines the fate, your own fate or your collective fate, which means if you're connected to a race, you can also bring your whole race down. As for example, Thoth did when he brought his whole race down because he defected from the original teachings. Um, so, now, um, I did intend for my video to be around 40 minutes and we're hitting one hour right now. Um, so I'm just going to make this last point very brief and just end it with a little bit about um, talk about the humanity's dark age and the lost civilization which is called the forbidden history or you know when it comes to the part of history that's been removed conveniently removed so the Illuminati human races of old carried varying hybrid genetic codes containing only portions of the diamond sun star gate DNA codes organic to angelic human DNA so they did carry these codes within them. Earth Illuminati human hybrid race lines extend back to around 670,000 BC. The contemporary Illuminati lineage only reaches back to around 250,000 BC, or years ago, sorry. Emerging through a primate ET human hybrid evolutionary stain known as the Leviathan. So these races are the Leviathan races. If the Illuminati elder races were to achieve their goals of Earth Templar Dominion, so take control of the Earth's energy uh, chakras, points in the, in the Earth itself, um, the Illuminati gene lines would need to progressively interbreed with those of the angelic human over many generations in order for the Illuminati races to gain by genetic blending so this is called genetic blending and uh, then they'll have access to biological earth earth's planetary templar halls of amenti stargates and that's information found in voyager's book volume two second edition by ashayana dian and um so attaining that pivotal information about the, the training pertaining to the Templar mechanics of Earth and where all the stargates and Q sites and everything on planet Earth were through the angelic humans who had that knowledge within their DNA. Um, having that information or human, human uh, angelic lines having that information, they were interested in interbreeding with, with us, the angelic humans in order to attain access to that information and that's precisely what these competing illuminati tribes or groups have done historically to this day so they're still trying 
and the progressive orchestration of denying sacred knowledge to the masses and falsifying the human historical record while promoting, promoting extensive um, overbreeding and overpopulation through historical forced interbreeding, distorted spiritual teachings and manipulative science has not occurred haphazardly. What we're seeing now as a downfall of human civilization and the lowest point of, um, of, of humanity in terms of consciousness, this is not a haphazard event. It is by design, it's fully by design. These things have occurred and still occurring by a meticulous contrived uh, planning and carried out over many generations of course since 250,000 BC is these things take time it cannot be done just over one two three four generations it has to be over thousands and thousands of years and it was all planned by very meticulous design to reach this pivotal point where they can gain access to the Templars of the earth and thereby access the genetic codes of the human DNA. And uh, one of their, one of their, <laughs> sorry, just laughing, my dog is, is uh, fighting with, with a fly, try to catch the fly and he just can't get it, gets really frustrated and starts to <laughs> jump on the walls and try to, um, it's really funny watching him. Anyways, um, so for the last 13,000 years, especially the Illuminati human forces guided by their off-planet directors and, and elder kin, because they get their, their guidance from up there, they've been covertly grooming and cultivating the human masses. And all this to prepare humanity for the upcoming a gloom and doom event which is called the appointment or human appointment with destiny yeah very nice and so during this period the illuminati objective of earth templar dominium could potentially be fulfilled if their multi-generational attempt at genetic blending so they still want to genetically blend us with their own genetics um, if that were were successful so some illuminati humans and all of their visiting kin, as well as the MCO Crystal River Guardians, have known since 22,326 BC that this human appointment with destiny thing was scheduled to occur over the next period of planetary significance, which is 2000 to 2007, um, during the stellar activation cycle which uh, 2000 was that year, you know, if you remember hearing about the doom and gloom coming in year 2000 where the world's going to end, you know, that's where it comes from. Um, so the ancient covert battle for the Templar Stargate Dominion has re-emerged from these Atlantean days of old, directly into our present time, because in the year 2000, there, you, there we go, our Earth entered the period of planetary significance long awaited by everyone not just the illuminati but the mceo guardian as well and so this period of planetary significance is called a stellar activation cycle it's a period in time when earth's planetary templar halls of amenti stargate stargates engage in a 17 year opening cycle 17 years opening cycle so from 2000 to 2017 these important stargates through which we can ascend open and during this time there is an, an a natural organic ascension passage through the stargates it becomes available to all life on earth and that's extensively also uh, mentioned in in the voyager's book uh, to second edition as well if you want to read up on on that and and gain more information um, when it comes to this particular topic um, now I think I will end the video here and if you have any particular questions you can ask in the comment section below if I don't know the answer to it I will link you to 
uh, where you can find it, uh, either from the Voyages or the MCO teachings and the Christic and Kilontic science uh, texts. So don't hesitate to ask if you have a question that I haven't addressed. And until next time, much love and thank you for joining me. And don't forget to share, like, and please consider small donations so we can keep doing the work. Much love. Take care.